Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to episode 106 of the TNA Impact Wrestling TW 2013 Let's Play. We are now on the road to Hardcore Justice, which is our July pay-per-view. We've got six weeks worth of build, so I think we're going to have some mini programs in between uh, before we have our eventual card for the pay-per-view. So maybe it gives us a chance to build a few wrestlers up, um, introduce a, new, a couple of new faces, and uh, yeah, just hopefully take the company to that next level. Um, 16 segments today, 3 pre-show segments, hopefully you know it's a decent show, hopefully it gets a good rating as we begin our new era with Samoa Joe as the champion. We're booking today's show from the Giant Centre, which is in the Tri-State region, and I'll just confirm I think that's in Hershey, Pennsylvania, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll double check that right now, Giant Centre, where are we really, and it is Hershey written up, yep, so hopefully to get the sell out 12,000, half thousand, before the economy and the wrestling industry goes down. So hopefully we'll have a good show, new storylines are all kicking off from obviously the aftermath of Slammiversary, and hopefully it's a pay-per-view that you guys, well, if it was a pay-per-view you guys enjoyed, and hopefully it's a show you will enjoy as well, so let's kick straight into it. Right, so obviously we've got this and uh, Impact being hosted in the same show, so we won't get our attendance until next episode. But in a match that had some good action, but not much in the way of heat. The Nation of Ua Nation and Bobby Lashley defeated Crown Time of JTG, Jason Paul and Shad. In uh, 8.46 when Bobby Lashley defeated Jason Paul by pinfall with a spear. 69C+, pretty decent as we continue to build the overness up of The Nation. The tag team storylines continued with this, and of course the great chemistry between Gaspard and Jason Paul. Oh, a lot of skill improvements here. Bobby Lashley improves his rumble skills, Jason Paul improves his performance skills, and Ua Nation improves his technical skills. Quick look at the dirt sheet, and the negatives are mostly for holding back. Not too bad, not too bad for our opening pre-show match. Next up is some six-man action, a match that had some good action, but not much in the way of heat. Bram in the Kingdom which is of course Redman and Paul Burchill, defeated the put-together team of James Storm, Eric Young and Showtime in 10-19 when Bram defeated Showtime with a handful of the tights. We saw an under -match, undercard match to get a couple of guys over, 55C- there, Bram continues his impressive run with this win. James Storm improves his flying skills, Paul Burchill improving rumble skills. The negatives, again inconsistency, some with low momentum and low morale. At the end of the day, it's really just a case of getting the, the Kingdom and Bram over, and hopefully that can be the, the future of their company at one point. And our final pre-show match, and a match that had some good action, but not much of the way of heat. Masata Yoshino defeated MVP in 904 with a lightning spiral. 65C, just a match to kind of give Yoshino a win. MVP was off his game. No skill improvements, and the up sheet has mostly MVP negative, so who could he be on the, the way out soon? It remains to be seen. Now time for the actual episode of TNA Crossfire. So we start off the show with some more Joe and Andrew and I love coming out to the ring. Joe is holding his newly won TNA World Championship. Andrew and says tonight is a celebration. Tonight is the first of many in the long reign of Samoa Joe as TNA World Champion. This company's greatest wrestler, done what no wrestler has done before, which is defeat CM Punk for the World Championship. Not only now is he the greatest wrestler on the planet, but he's also all mine. Joe replies, you said it right baby, here I stand as your new world, TNA World Champion and pretty much the greatest wrestler in the world. Nobody can touch the Samoan submission machine. As for you CM Punk, I told you I would defeat you, and I did. In bitter news, I had Angelina speak to the TNA office, and while you do get your rematch CM Punk, you do not get it. Till Hardcore Justice. So until then, you can just wait and sit at the back of the line, and for me, well, I'll just rest and take some time off until Hardcore Justice. Then the glass shatters, and of course we're greeted by the appearance of Stone Cold Steve Austin, the TNA Crossfire General Manager. Apparently that was all I could fit in text-wise for the segment, or the angle, so I'll have to do it in a second angle. That was a 75B- there, so a promo from Joe and Angelina bragging that he's the champion. And the glass shatters, what will Stone Cold do? We'll find out. Don't need any pre-booking at the moment. General Manager 
So Crossfire, as I say, Steve Austin appears. Austin says, so you had your little girlfriend to help you win the TNA title. I can't do anything about it because of office, but you see, I can do something with you, and it's my job to do the best for TNA. So I had a little conversation, a little talk, and a little call from one of the boys up north. And let me, let's just say this man wants to test himself against you. A familiar theme plays, My Time Is Now, and John Cena is in the Impact Ring. Cena says, So this is TNA Impact Wrestling. We've heard a little about you. Been talking a little trash about me and the boys from up north. Well, I'm here for business. I'm here to show, to just to see how good your champion really is. Mr. Austin afforded me the opportunity. So tonight, Mr. Joe, as, as, as Cena would say, if you're so tough, Samoa Joe, John Cena, one on one. You want some? Come get some. Austin says, want some? His sorry ass is in this match regardless, and it's our main event tonight. So 83B+, plus. I know I said I was going to try and keep it realistic, but I need to try and get a couple more guys over as um, main eventers, including some more Joe. I feel we can't keep, like, obviously losing popularity of Punk onto him. So I thought, why not loan in um, Cena because of our alliance with WWE? And we'll do a mini invasion from John Cena. So he's here, and we've got a main event for tonight, which is some more Joe versus John Cena, which continues our TNA World Championship storyline. I don't know how people feel about John Cena coming in here, but I feel it, it, it plays into the angle of somebody from up north and obviously a, a former friend of Samoa Joe. Our first match of the evening about the feature Great Action and Average Cheat. State of Mind defeated Team 3D in 901 when Kota Ibushi defeated Brother Devon with the Golden Star Press. State of Mind make defence number 4 of their TNA World Tag Team Champions. 64C. Average. Could have been better. I think the pay per view match was better. But it continues the tag team champions of the world storyline. Good chemistry from Team 3D. We're going to slowly phase them out. That was their second opportunity. I say the dark sheet will be mostly Billy Ray and Brother Devon for their declining physical ability. After Nakamura and Ibushi win again, some of familiar music hits is Rocky Romero. Romero says, Yo, Naka, Ibushi. Good win, again. Debatable tactics, but job done nonetheless. But you two got me thinking. We've known each other for a long, long time. So I was thinking, if I get a tag team partner, we do the dance one more time for the TNA Tag Team Championship. Both Ibushi and Nakamura laugh at the prospect. So we have an angle now where Rocky Romero is going to get a partner together and they're going to take on Nakamura and Ibushi. I got a 83B+, so I'm happy with that. Only done a cool crowd, but yeah, pretty happy with that. Should have put forward the tag team storyline, but it was one of the ones I had to create the, create the angle from scratch for the first time, and I was still a bit iffy with that, but I'm not happy with that rating. And um, we've got a tag team feud for the tag team championships, hopefully. An extremely short match, Adam Cole defeated David Richards in 508 by pinfall with Florida Key. Just a 69C+. Plus. Um, again, David Richards playing the role as enhancement talent. No skill improvements, and it gives Adam Cole the Easy victory, of course this was heel against heel, so that could be why, but it was just again just somebody jobbing out to put Adam Cole over. After Adam Cole scores the pinfall victory over David Richards, Chris Jericho walks out to the ramp. He doesn't say anything, he just simply applauds Adam Cole. What does this mean? So in AB here, obviously Jericho and Cole had a confrontation at the pay-per-view. And they break the walls down, future storyline has advanced with this segment. So obviously these two will be working a program. Both guys penalised for poor gimmicks, which is disappointing. So many poor gimmicks in this, it's frustrating. Next up, in a match that's some good action and average heat, Mascara Dorada defeated Brian Cage in 733 by pinfall. Mascara Dorada makes defence number 3 of his TNA X Division Championship. 64C here, just another match to give the X Division a bit of a boost. Although... Really, it just seems to be a pretty flat standard match, so could be better, but we'll, we'll roll with it. Stone Cold Steve Austin then comes out. Dorada, you're a hell of a champion, but I feel you need to be a fighting champion. we got to get this X Division on the map, so next week, Dorada versus Morrison for the title. 76B-, the X Division storyline has advanced with this segment. 
No skill improvements here, but just to look at that match in for next week. So that will be on Crossfire, because that's Austin Show. And it's going to be one on one. We'll just book it right now. And that is his faces would be Morrison. I think they Morrison. And he'll be up against Mascara Dorada. So we'll save that. Oh. Auto name and save. So that's booked in for next week's show. And I got a 76B minus. I think working Austin's morale. It's, it's hard on segments. Not that it's taking much off it, but still, I'd rather try and get as good a rating as possible. But that's good from Austin. Next up, we have a small segment with Johnny Devine saying, We're coming. Welcome to Devine Entertainment. Obviously, I made the ass up of the, the pay per view, putting him in a segment for some bizarre reason, putting off his debut. It should have been tonight. But um, we're, we're looking at a few guys to come in that could potentially be folk in Divine Entertainment, plus a couple of guys on the roster. Won't reveal them just yet. Um, a lot of them will be short-term contracts to see if they make it with Johnny Divine and if we can turn him from somebody with loveliness into somebody that could be a, a really good character going forward. Just something completely different, and I want to try and build up some managers as well. But only a 17 F plus here. He'll take a lot of work, but hopefully we can we can get him over. But then cut backstage, so Austin's made it back to his office. He's having a Steve Weiser. He's had a good night. CM Punk bursts in. Punk says, hello Steve. I think you know why I'm here. Austin says, you're right man. Listen, there's nothing I can do. Office has screwed you over. you got to wait the eight weeks. Well, six weeks it should be, sorry. All I can do is get you prepared for that. Now I've got your tune-up match tonight. You versus Drew Galloway. Punk says, I guess I'll need to take it, but rest assured, if you try and screw me over, like Kurt Angle did, there will be hell to pay. So Punk's furious that he can't get his title match straight away, has to wait six weeks to hardcore justice. But that gets an 82B rated segment, and CM Punk came across well. Somehow Austin's learning how to show more charisma and improving acting. But that's pretty decent, I'm quite happy with that. Next up, and about to feature great action and a good crowd, Ricochet defeated Joy Ryan in 947 with Chocolate Rain. Also, Ricochet is now a face. Yeah, 61C, not amazing, but I mean, needs a couple of victories to get him over a bit more. Joy Ryan with flying skills. Negatives are mostly all for Joy Ryan plus the length and the experience. The problem is, a lot of guys are treated as main event talents, but we can't afford the time to give them all these big long matches, so some of them will have shorter matches. What we can do is of course down the line is maybe change um, the product up a little bit just because we're trying to fit so much in the, the two hour broadcast. After this Drew Galloway and Roddy Piper have a promo backstage. Piper says Ricochet after the stunt you pulled last night you bet your bottom dollar that Drew Galloway will be after you. However tonight the champ has bigger fish to fry. Drew then says that's right God knows what I do, uh, did to deserve this but tonight I face CM Punk. Well, it's not Ricochet, it is someone who I believe I am better than. Punk can say he's the best in the world, but he's never fought Drew Galloway. So, we've got a storyline obviously going up between Drew Galloway and Ricochet, which we called the bank on it. So, um, that storyline advances naturally through this promo, but 70C+, plus, and hopefully Piper and, and Galloway can continue to get over, especially Drew, and then we can maybe move Piper onto some more clients down the line, if possible. And match did some good action, but not much in the way of heat. Mia Yim defeated Angelina Love in 10.25 with a kiss of the dragon. Mia Yim makes defence number 10 of her TNA knockouts title. 51D, okay, nothing great. So they get basically our top uh, two knockouts from the human face divide. The women's storylines advanced. I do feel we need some more uh, knockouts getting over, which is why we're putting Angelina with some more Joe, but who knows with this. We'll, we'll continue and we'll, we'll see where we can work from there. Angelina's improving her flying skills and that sheet has just title prestige and not too bad. I think we're a bit more over on this, we can certainly get this uh, division flying again. Then and about the featured great action and a good crowd, CM Punk defeated Drew Galloway in 9.17 we had go to sleep. The announcing quality wasn't up to the same standard of the match which drew a 76B-, which suppose is, is okay, and CM Punk's improving his performance skills. I think if we can get Drew a bit more over that, easily gets into the, the Bs with an 80 odds, that's going to be too bad. I think now we're firmly relying on a, on a solid main event. Next up we got a promo from John Cena. John Cena says, don't change the channel. You're not watching what you think you'll be watching, but the champ is here in TNA. Now it may only be for a short time, 
when Mr. Austin phoned me and told me that there's competition here, then you know John Cena. I couldn't say no. I'm all about competition. Which leads me to my opponent tonight, the champion, Samoa Joe. Now a lot of people don't know this, but me and Joe go way, way back. So if there's anyone who knows what Joe's thinking, it's John Cena. So TNA, Impact Wrestling, everybody, the world, get ready. It's time for John Cena. Cena does his salute, you know, the, the usual sale check that he does. But now he salutes at the camera, uh, 92A. It's just a perfect decision if we want to get this company, making sure we're getting high pop and, and getting other wrestlers over. It's, it's bringing somebody Cena's caliber in. Well, we still can. And that leads us to a main event. Will it deliver? Nah, it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot better. I think we're going to end up dropping pop. But in a match that had some excellent in ring action and great heat from the audience, Samoa Joe defeated John Cena in 1816 by pinfall. After Angela Love interfered, Samoa Joe makes defence number one of his TNA World title. The announcing quality wasn't up to the stand of the match. Again, we just need to hope that over time that announced team will get over. The World Championship storyline has advanced and it was a 79 B rated match. Um, Cena's improving rumble, Cena's improving flying. The negatives. Cena's not actually declining this one. Well, this is interesting. I did a WWE save going just for fun. And Cena was starting to decline, and he's not declining in this. So, decently, you know, it's only the fact that both guys were holding back in the announced team. If it comes to us, we may change the announced team up just to make sure we're getting higher ratings on here. And it's not affecting our pop. But overall, 81B. So, we don't lose any pop, we don't gain any pop. And overall, it's just a, a standard show. But no, 81B is still, still pretty decent. And um, hopefully, you know, we get some of lower acts. Promoted a little bit and get some over on this so we can really push and, and get a pop up and continue to go to the company. But uh, that's it for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you get any comments, please leave them in the comment section. What do you make of the, the John Cena cameo appearance in, in TNA? Um, are you happy with that? you feel I shouldn't be using these kind of stars? Let me know. But uh, apart from that, guys, yeah, if you haven't already subbed, hit the sub button. And these videos will drop into your sub boxes every definitely day, Tuesday and every Friday for this series. And yeah, until next time, it's Twitter 1 Maxwell. Take it easy, and I'll speak to you all real soon. Bye-bye.